I'm always amazed of using a twin needle with decorative stitches. But in this video, we're gonna go over all the uses of a twin needle for the Fop Creative Icon 2, how to set up your machine, and how to properly thread for having two needles. So one thing you're gonna start off with is noticing that there are lots of twin needle sizes. So first off, they are determined by how wide or separated the two needles are, usually in millimeters. Starting, the smaller ones are kind of in that 2.0 range. Um, here I have from our Viking needle collection, the 4.0 wide needles. You can also find Fof branded twin needles at your Fof store. And, but a twin needle is a twin needle, sometimes called a double needle. So if you are used to calling it that way, please do so. But I'm gonna show you when twin needles are used with decorative stitches, like we do at our Fof Stitching Cosmos online course, how to get the most bang for your buck. So before you do anything, before you even put the needle on, make sure that you go into the settings and tell the machine what size of twin needle you're using. So in here, you'll find where you can set the stitch limiting options for that size. So I'm gonna be using a 2.0 today, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Another nice thing about this is if we were to turn the machine off at the end of today and turn it back on tomorrow, if this is still select, or if this is still on, meaning you did not turn it off, it will come up and still be on. So you will need to actually turn it off when you're done using your twin needle. Correction, when you turn the machine off after using the twin needle function, this message will pop up and notice that the stitch in the background is back to a single needle option. The twin needle setting was previously selected. To continue using a twin needle, select twin needle in the settings. Otherwise, make sure that you do not have a twin needle inserted. Okay, so that means that it did erase what we had set for the twin needle. So if you still have that in on day two, you do have to go back into the settings and reselect it. Now, before I go into how to get everything selected and threaded, what are some other options of twin needles? So we do use it for pin tucks, which we also use in our Stitching Cosmos course. We also see it usually on the hem of your knit t-shirts or sweatshirts. So that double row of stitching, if you wanna duplicate that, you're gonna use a twin needle and it's gonna look just fine. On the back, you're gonna have kind of a zigzag as your bobbin does double duty, catching both the needles. So it won't look identical to the way the stitch was when you bought the shirt in the store, but it will have that same effect. You'll still have the stretch and give. So if you're looking for that top stitching look, that's another way. You'll also find like this one's a 4.0. So those needles are a little further apart. I've also seen quilters use this to stitch down like the little leading in between appliques. So that little band that goes between, you can actually use the twin needle to stitch that down. And you can free motion quilt with this. You could also put it on your embroidery machine and, and, and. So you can see that having a set of twin needles of some small, medium, and large sizes wouldn't be a bad idea. They do make them in stretch versions and also some metallic uh, needle versions. So depending on the threads that you're using. So before we go on, when you've selected the twin needle function, look at what your stitch is gonna look like. As you pick a stitch, so for fun, I'm gonna pick our gathering stitch. It actually will show you exactly how it's gonna stitch on screen. Another fun one is kind of like that honeycomb stitch. And as you go through any of your, honestly, your utility stitches, they kind of come out pretty cool. Um, well, sometimes they might not let you use them. Okay, but there is a way around using these for your overcast stitches is you can reduce the stitch width. And that's actually what the twin needle function is doing. But you can manu manually make sure that you are not overstepping the width of your foot and what you do is you take your nine millimeter wide stitch, that's your max stitch width, minus your size of twin needle. So if I had nine minus two, just make sure your stitch width is seven or less and you'll be fine to stitch it. Even if you haven't engaged the twin needle function, that's how you get around it. So that's a little side note for you. If your machine is saying, 
that you can't do this. You really can. Just, it wants you to be careful. All right, so let's go into some of these other stitches. I have actually done buttonholes decoratively with twin needles. That is kind of fun. How about let's look at some of the quilt stitches. You can see that you'll start to get some fun looking paired up stitches, especially when you start using them with different colors. That is a cool stitch, by the way. Especially, I love recommending to my students to use like variegated thread in one needle and then a solid color in another or two variegated. It's up to you. You can have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so let's talk about threading the machine for a twin needle. So right here is the only place you have to really be aware of how you thread the machine. In other words, just put the two spools of thread on your machine that you're gonna use, take the thread in your hand, and go ahead and place it in those first two grooves like normal. But when you get here, do you see this little guy that's sticking up above your housing? If you put one thread on one side and one thread on the other, you will find that each thread is going to get its own tension. So I'm gonna just separate them in my hand. And then as I go right and left, I'm gonna kind of re-put them in my hand again come up and under, like I'm about ready to come up to the top. But before I do, I like to come over here, hold those threads and do that floss trick. That really makes sure you get it all in the tensions. I make sure both threads get in the take up lever and then go ahead and come down to the last guide right above the needle. Now at this point, your needle threader does not work uh, with a twin needle. So you are gonna need to manually thread the needles separately. It does not matter which thread goes in which needle. So even though this one's on my left here, it technically can go into the right needle of the twin needle pair. So it doesn't matter. Your bobbin's just gonna hang out, do its thing, catch both the needles as it stitches. And I can't wait to show you a couple stitches with this unique thread combination. If you're looking to add a few additional pages to your stitch book, do you notice you could stitch out all these stitches again with a twin needle and maybe a fun combination of thread? Here's just three that I quickly picked. And because the twin needle function is on, I can go from stitch to stitch and not worry about any particular settings that I would might need to adjust for the twin needle. The machine will actually do it for me. You also can use the thread cutter scissors at the end of your patterns. That is not a problem at all. And I hope you'll try out some different versions of the twin needle. You can do them with the larger stitches, the maxi stitches, and you really can have some, <laughs> add some fun details as you go. So if you wanna learn more about your FOF Creative Icon 2, the links below will take you to the FOF Stitching Cosmos online course. If you wanna check out the free videos that you can preview for free and see if that course is right for you. And you can also binge watch all the free tutorials that we have created on this beautiful machine that you own, and you'll be able to get started right away.